This is the S500 quadcopter with the Pixar 4 flight controller flying an autonomous mission. By the end of this video, you'll have all the steps needed to plan and fly your own autonomous missions. This is part 5 of my Pixar 4 S500 drone build series, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect telemetry to the Pixar 4 and configure autonomous missions using Q ground control. If you have not yet taken a look at parts 1 through 4 of this series, make sure to do so. Now, let's get started. For this video, you will need your quadcopter set up with all the steps of parts one through four of the series. You'll also, of course, be needing your transmitter, battery, action camera, all those kind of standard accessories. You'll also be needing a telemetry radio set. This radio set I have here is from Hollybro, and it contains two radios that will place on the quadcopter and on a ground control station, such as your laptop. And using these two radios, we'll be able to communicate with the quadcopter through the ground control station and therefore updates our autonomous missions, uh, check the status of the quadcopter, and you can also use it during regular flying to monitor your quadcopter, uh, such as um, checking on your battery voltage and its current location and speed and all those kinds of things. So it's a really cool accessory to have, even if you're not doing autonomous mission planning, um, just to be able to check on your quadcopter. So if you want to get this, I've added a link in the video description. Within the telemetry radio kit from Hollybro, you'll receive two radios. This is um, what they look like. They've got this little module here and this default antenna that they come with. You have the option of replacing this antenna with um, some better quality ones if you have so in order to increase your range. But from what I've been doing for testing, these uh, standard antennas work really well for a few hundred meters. So it's a good option to start with. So within the kit, you've got these two modules, these two radios. One of them will connect to the Pixar 4 flight controller using a six wire cable that comes with it. So you plug it into the radio and then into one of the Telem ports on the Pixar 4 flight controller. The other radio you'll be connecting to your ground control station. So this can be your laptop or some kind of smartphone and you'll be needing a micro USB cable in order to connect it. Um, you'll receive one with the kit but you can also use the same cable that came with the Pixar 4 flight controller kits because it's the same cable. Um, so now let's get started with the actual setup and configuration. The first thing we need to do is update the firmware of our radios. This is the same process as updating the firmware of the Pixar 4 flight controller. So go ahead and open up QGON Control and go to this firmware page. If you don't have QGON Control downloaded, there will be a link in the video description. So now what you need to do is plug in your USB into your computer and plug the other end into one of your two radios. The firmware update may begin automatically. However, you may have to unplug your USB, then plug it back in, and then the firmware will begin to update. Once the upgrade is complete, you can unplug your first radio and then follow the exact same steps to update the firmware of your second radio. With the firmware updated on both of our radios, now we're going to attach them to the quadcopter and the ground control station. So take your first radio, this is going to be the one that attaches to your vehicle, so your quadcopter, and also make sure to grab the six wire cable that comes with the kit. So go ahead and plug that into the radio, and you can take the other end and plug it into the Pixar 4 flight controller into the Telem 1 or the Telem 2 port. So for the rest of the setup, I'm just going to temporarily place my telemetry radio right here. But before you fly, make sure to mount it so that the antenna isn't in the way of any of the propellers. For the second radio, this is going to be the one that connects to the ground control station. So either a laptop, some computer, or a tablet, smartphone, any kind of device like that. And so take your micro USB cable and go ahead and plug that into radio number two. With our radio number two attached to our ground control station, we can clearly see that it's powered and there's some kind of uh, information being transmitted. However, our first radio, um, we don't have these same lights. And this is, of course, because the quadcopter isn't powered on. So go ahead and power on your quadcopter. Now with the quadcopter powered on, you can see that we have some lights on our radio one. We have this green light and flashing red light. What's really important to notice is that we have a solid green light and solid green light on both of our radios. This means that the two radios are connected and are able to transmit data. You can also see that we have a flashing red light and another flashing red light. And this is an indicator meaning that we're actually transmitting data back and forth. 
And so what's really cool is that if we go back to QGround Control, in our summary page, we have all of the information from our original quadcopter that was set up in the previous video. So without any wire connected to the Pixar 4 flight controller and simply the telemetry radios, we have all of the information from the quadcopter and we can configure all of these settings wirelessly. So this is super cool. It's gonna make doing setup so much easier when you're out flying a quadcopter. And this also gives us the power to update a quadcopter while it's flying um, and update our missions and do all the really cool features that I'm gonna describe in this video. Now that our radios are completely set up and attached to our vehicle and ground control station, we can now start planning our missions. So in terms of the vehicle setup page, all of these settings can remain the same from the previous video. There will be some settings such as altitude and speed, but we can change those in our dedicated mission. So now go ahead and press this button to go to the mission page. Once you open up the mission page, you'll be brought to this page with a map. It'll either be centered on your current location using the GPS module of your quadcopter, or you can move the page to a field um, so that you can plan your mission from afar. So that's what I've done right now. So on this page, the first option we have is to configure our launch point. This is where we're going to take off with our quadcopter. And on the right hand side, you'll see this mission start. This is where we can set some default characteristics that will apply for our entire mission. So some important ones to note are waypoint altitudes. This will be the height that our vehicle is above the ground when it's traveling on its mission or its path. I've temporarily just set mine to five meters. This will depend on your terrain, if you're on a flat terrain, if you have any fences you may have to avoid. So this will depend on your scenario. And you can also set the flight speed. Four meters per second is uh, pretty reasonable speed. You can go slower if you want to. Uh, even one and two meters does move pretty quickly. Um, so if it is your first time flying autonomously, I would recommend setting this down one meter per second so that everything is in control. You also have the option to set some camera settings here. I won't be doing that now. And in this vehicle info page, we can just confirm that we have the Pixoc 4 Pro firmware and we have our multi-rotor vehicle. This launch position will be determined by the software itself. So my current altitude will be 43 meters. And this is based on the location of your launch point as well as factoring the waypoint altitude. So with a waypoint altitude of five meters, the actual altitude of my vehicle will be 43 meters, meaning that I'm 38 meters above sea level. So the, once again, this, fee, this uh, number will depend on your actual physical location. So this is the first step in planning our mission. The next thing we need to do is specify our takeoff characteristics. So on the left-hand side, you can press this takeoff button and you'll get a new tab here on the right. And here we can kind of specify our altitude at which we want to take off to. As you can see, this default five meters has just been applied to it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Um, and you also have the option of changing your heading. Um, by default, it will just use the same heading um, that your quadcopter has when you take off, but you can change this if you need to face a certain building, for instance. So I'm just going to leave this. There's several different types of missions that we can choose from. There's waypoint, region of interest, and pattern, each with a different purpose. I'll be using the waypoint mission for this demo. The waypoint mission allows us to manually select positions in the field that we want the quadcopter to fly to. Now go ahead and press the waypoint button on the left hand side. This is going to allow us to place waypoints in space for our quadcopter to go to. So if, um, so if you just press um, on your field, you'll get a new waypoint created for each one of them. And you'll see on the right hand side, these are uh, created. So if you click on the first waypoint, it'll be hovered here and you have the characteristics that you can change for it. So for altitude, once again, this is the same default five meters. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. You can here change the hold. And what this means is that once it reaches this waypoint, how long should it wait? So maybe at each waypoint you wanna take a picture. So it'd be good to wait a few seconds to stabilize your camera, for instance. You can also change your heading and change your flight speed for specific sections of the mission. So scrolling through the different waypoints, we can see I'm just gonna keep these settings all the same so that it follows um, this little shape here. So once you have your waypoints set, you also have the option of adjusting them. 
So if you click on a waypoint, you can actually drag it and move it around. If you press the plus button, it'll create a new waypoint um, if you need to get more specific. And on the right hand side, you can also press this trash button in order to remove a waypoint. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove a few here. So once you have your kind of flight pattern configured to your liking, now we need to actually return or land our quadcopter. So go ahead and press this return button here. With the return selected, now on the right hand side, we have several options. We have this basic category or these more advanced um, return options. So I'm just going to stay on the basic page. And some of the things that are important to take note of is that we can either return to launch. And what this is going to do is once you finish your last waypoint, it's going to send the quadcopter back to where it took off. So it's takeoff place and then simply land. Or you can have the vehicle land immediately where it is. In order to finish my loop and close it up, I'm going to have my quadcopter return to launch. So as you can see on the diagram here, once it reaches this final waypoint, this white arrow indicates that it's going to return to its launch position and then land. So you may be wondering when you're actually returning to launch, there's some things we need to take into account for that. And for that, we need to look at the actual parameters for this return to launch function. In order to change the parameters for return to launch, first press this purple plane and then go to your vehicle setup page. In order to change the parameters for return to launch, you can either search for them in the parameters page, but the easier way to do it is simply press the safety page. So in the safety page, we have this return to launch settings tab. And here we can specify the altitude at which it's going to return and the loiter time and loiter altitude. So I'm going to use this five meters, meaning that before the quadcopter returns to its takeoff position, it's going to go to an altitude of five meters. This is the same altitude as the mission, so it shouldn't move. Next thing I'm going to do is specify one of these three conditions. So when it returns to launch, should it land immediately? Should it loiter and not land? Or should it loiter and land after a specified time? So what this means is that you can either have the quadcopter land immediately, so once it reaches the takeoff position, or it goes to the takeoff position, it simply hovers there, or it hovers and then it lands. So to make sure everything um, is all right, it's in the correct uh, landing position, I'm gonna choose this loiter and land after a specified time. So for this loiter time, I simply just chose five seconds. This means that it's gonna hover for five seconds above its landing position, and then it's going to uh, land. And the loiter altitude, you can change this if you want to. I'm just gonna keep this five meters once again. Another thing to take note of is this land mode settings. And here you can specify the rate at which you're going to descend. So the default value is one meter per second for this parameter. I have simply just put 0.7 meters per second so that it's a little slower just in case um, anything goes crazy. And you also have this option to disarm. If you select a value that is greater than zero, then the quadcopter will automatically disarm after that specified amount of time. So right now, after two seconds, the quadcopter will disarm and none of the motors will be spinning. Or what you can do is, um, with this checked, select minus one. And this is essentially gonna turn the parameter off, meaning that the quadcopter is not gonna disarm. I'm gonna set this on to two seconds so that once it lands, it disarms within two seconds so that it's not accidentally still up and alive and um, doesn't accidentally turn on again. With all of your parameters set and your mission configured, uh, it's always a good practice just to run through your mission real quick and make sure it's going to do everything you expect. So click on your mission start. Here we can see we have a waypoint altitude of 5 meters. It's going to be flying 4 meters per second. And just a good reality check is 43 meters of valid altitude for your region. So it's good to check that. For takeoff, it's going to be taking off to 5 meters. And then just click through these different waypoints. So we can see the first waypoint indicated right here second waypoint, third, fourth, fifth, all of them have an altitude of four. And then for our landing strategy, we selected return to launch. Once again, you do have the option to just land immediately or do something else. I'm gonna keep it simple and choose return to launch. Once you're satisfied with your mission and all of the parameters are correct, 
you can go ahead and press this upload required button. And this is going to be using the wireless telemetry to upload it to the Pixar 4 flight controller. That does it for my Pixar 4 S500 drone build series. Thanks to all of you who have stuck around from the beginning. It was definitely a long and complicated set of videos to follow, but finally getting your quad up in the air, using autonomous features and flying is what makes this hobby just so amazing. Through this last demo and really the entire series, you hopefully saw what the Pixar 4 and S500 are capable of and how much fun they are. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite part of this build was. Mine was my first successful hover test, and of course, making these videos for you all. If you enjoy this series, go ahead, give me a like. It goes a long way for me just knowing that I'm able to help out a few of you. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel and stay up to date for more drone tutorials and flights. This has been an awesome series, and once again, thanks to all of you who follow along. See you in the next video. No.